Welcome to Brainstorm MTG. I'm ELD, and this is Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Mass. Here we have Kenton on a Phoenix build. What he has in there, a lot of different ways that can go is that gets ported over from Modern. And uh, Matt Kiefer on an As Foretold deck that he's been putting in a bunch of work with since the card was first printed back in Amonkhet. Thought Seize here for Kenton. And uh, we see a turn to Jace. That's probably got to go. Uh, that is pretty severe. Uh, Would have been defensible to force a will this Thought Seize uh, if you're confident that your force is going to resolve. Uh, but given that Kenton looks like he's going to be playing forces himself, a little bit too much risk. If we're going to uh, let that Jace go away and uh, hope to recoup an advantage uh, with this uh, Ancestral Vision, uh, probably going the long way around. Mox Diamond into Chalice at 1 and suspending the Ancestral Vision. So four turns from now, see if this investment pays off. Kenton's deck likely very explosive, could possibly wrap things up well before that final counter comes off the Ancestral Vision. We'll have to see. Buried Alive, a uh, very powerful way of getting all of your Phoenixes into the graveyard. Sorcery Speed, though. And now Dak Faden, uh, another card that plays very well with Graveyard Recursion. And uh, Punishing Fire, like going to the Graveyard, I think. Grove of the Burn Willows, going to be able to recoup those cards, making Dak's ramping up ability just that much better. And now Intuition, not, not quite buried alive, but uh, possibly a stronger card. We'll see. Only gets two Phoenixes into the graveyard. Um, Kenton wants these to come back. He's likely going to have to throw some cards right in the trash. The Chalice at one going to make it very difficult to go ahead and get three spells cast. Dark Ritual. And making sure he's got the proper mana. And got a Brainstorm. Yeah, it's Cabal Therapy and Brainstorm. So a couple of Phoenixes coming back. Clearing out that Jack Faden. Now Kiefer's line looking much, much more sound. The danger of trying to keep Planeswalkers in play versus these Phoenixes. Not worth the risk. Another Phoenix coming down. Ooh, and Punishing Fire taking out one. So, Punishing Fire going to do a lot of defense here for Matt Kiefer. Just getting ready to fire this off. Returning and clearing all the Phoenixes. Paying a couple of life with that Ancient Tomb. A necessary evil there, but Kenton's entire Phoenix Force now in the bin. Ancestral Visions resolving. Kiefer looking way ahead from here. Four mana, Karn. And now he's going to tick down. Ooh, grabbing a Tormod's Crypt. That is going to make it very difficult for Kenton to move forward. Just going to keep that out there. Let Kenton... Waste those cantrips. Young Pyromancer. Cracking for black. Karn actually not going to allow that. Uh, and Kenton going to go ahead and scoop from there. That Young Pyromancer just going to be taken out by a recurred Punishing Fire as soon as possible. And then from there, uh, Karn either grabbing Mycosynth Lattice or perhaps just animating and starting the beatdown depending on how much mana he'd have left over. From 8, might have actually just been correct to grab the punishing, or the uh, Mycosynth Lattice just to completely wrap things up. Probably how I would have played it offhand. There was a uh, Angarth's 
Rampage, I think it is, uh, that Kenton uh, tr attempted to play off of that Lotus Petal, and that would have uh, been target player sacrifices an artifact, creature, or planeswalker, uh, but Karn going to be able to stick around. Likely he should have just thrown out that, trying to get rid of the Karn. Was the uh, the big threat there of just locking up the game? Yeah, that uh, that combo was really spiked. Mycosynth Lattice Karn still not a very expensive card, uh, but Mycosynth Lattice uh, definitely saw a big big spike after that interaction. Uh, proved to be like actually worth taking up the sideboard slot. A lot of people were pretty skeptical uh, about whether or not it would be worth it. But yeah, the, the cost is, is just fine. Ability to have a one-card combo, so to speak, that just locks the game right up for your opponent. And you can go ahead and win on your leisure as long as you're not uh, behind on board. So Kenton now leading out with a preordain, hoping to get things set up. Special vision for Kiefer looking to play the long game here, just suspending on turn one. Now young Pyromancer threatens to potentially go wide, so Kiefer going to force a will that, just trying to keep things from getting too out of hand too early. Not worried about the card disadvantage now, going to try and recoup it later. Really haven't seen anything on Kenton's side as far as permission, I don't think. Just the, uh, the thoughts he's so far. Looks like he's more interested in throwing some haymakers and seeing what sticks. A punishing fire fired off just because. Might as well get that one point in now. It's going to be coming back off of this grove anyways. Alice at one. Going to make it that much worse. Now, Bitter Blossom, will it be enough? Oh, Thought Knots here, and now this is a really serious clock. So Bitter Blossom before kind of threatened to tie up Matt's mana base, forcing him to recur Punishing Fire just to stop things from getting out of hand. Now this Thought Knots here threatens to actually close things out pretty quickly. Be interesting to see if these fairy tokens can even go on the offensive. Buried alive, snagged there by the Thought Knot Seer. Hard could have done a lot of work getting some phoenixes into the graveyard. And now just a hard cast Phoenix swinging in for four in the air. And does have that echoing truth. Potentially buy a little bit of time. Punishing fire. Clearing out the blocker. Oh, and an ancient, that, that was, that escalated quickly. Just a city of traitors into another Thought Knot Seer grabbing the Echoing Truth. So the brakes are off the train at this point. Kenton having no way of slowing down these Eldrazi beats. And Matt sitting on a punishing fire. It's like, what do you swing with here? Maybe just the Phoenix? I guess just the Phoenix. Hoping to draw like a Buried Alive or something and recur a bunch of phoenixes in a hurry. This is a super dicey situation. Young Pyromancer. Kenton thinking about whether he wants to make some tokens with Pyromancer or save those cards for potentially needing to summon some phoenixes from the graveyard. These Thought Knots here are just gigantic on this board. 4-4 is just dominating 
these one one tokens and now as foretold island replacing that city of traders mana not going to be as much of an issue here now punishing fire coming back These 4-4s four just destroying these chump blockers. But Kenton still in it with the potential of drawing Buried alive. Perhaps recurring a bunch of Phoenixes. Where does Kenton go from here? A double block not going to work no matter what because of this punishing fire. Instead, he's just going to go ahead and single block both, trying to preserve his life total. One guy in play, two guys now. Gonna need to create some more tokens. It's a very grim situation. Keeper looking like he's just gonna wrap this up in two. Back of punishing fire. There it is. Clear out the spirit. Uh, clear out the young pyromancer. Just clear out this elemental or fairy, whichever one it is. And there's the handshake from Kenton. So Kiefer putting up some results here with some very powerful cards in. Thought knots here and as foretold. That is all for this one, but don't worry, there is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.